A landmark Kashmir conference convened within the British Parliament in London to commemorate International Human Rights Day, with the event presided over by British Parliament member Peterborough, Paul Bristow, and hosted by Tehariki Kashmir UK President Raja Fahim Kiani. During the conference, strong reactions were voiced against the Indian Supreme Court's pivotal decision favouring the special status of Kashmir, as well as the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A. Lord Kurban Hussein of the House of Lords and members of Parliament, including Kate Holleran, Sarah Bratcliffe, Steve Baker, Marco Longhi, Mohammad Yassin, Tahir Ali, Jess Phillips, Sarah Owen, Tanmanjit Singh Desi, and others, delivered speeches expressing solidarity with the oppressed Kashmiri people and condemning human rights violations and war crimes in occupied Kashmir. Kashmiri leaders, namely Abdul Hamid Lone, Mumzamil Ayub Thakur, Muhammad Ashraf Chugati, Rihana Ali, Gurchan Singh and others recounted the harrowing tales of atrocities suffered by the oppressed Kashmiri population, eliciting deep regret from members of the British Parliament. The conference concluded with Tariki Kashmir UK President Raja Fahim Kiani presenting a significant resolution pertaining to International Human Rights Day, which garnered majority approval through a vote. Additionally, the event was attended by President Tehariq Kashmir, Birmingham Chowdhury Ikram al Hook, Chowdhury Muhammad Sharif, Raja Abdul Kayum, Nazir Khan, Muhammad Ikram, Daud Shah, and other distinguished individuals, SM Irfan Tahir. World News, London. Uh, and on the atrocities occurring uh, in Gaza, we can't forget the human rights, the dire human rights situation that occurs uh, in Kashmir. And today we've discussed that. Uh, we remain absolutely resolute that if you care about human rights, you care about Kashmir and the suffering of ordinary people uh, in Kashmir. Today that was highlighted again uh, here at Westminster. We had a good turnout of members of parliament who were determined to make sure that the voices of their constituents and ordinary Kashmiris back home are also represented here and are heard here. That's what's important, that their voices are heard. It's Debbie Abrahams, chair of the APPG on Kashmir. Uh, and I wanted to come to this meeting just to, to show my uh, profound disappointment at the Supreme Court's ruling yesterday, which is upholding the revocation uh, of Articles uh, 317 and 35A. As I said in 2019, I believe that this is undemocratic and it potentially breaches uh, the UN, uh, various UN resolutions. Uh, I will be writing to the UN Secretary General and to the Office of the High Commission of the Human Rights as well as our own Foreign Office team and the Prime Minister himself, it needs to be questioned. When there are existing UN resolutions, this is clearly uh, an issue. Kurban Hussain, we have learned about the Indian Supreme Court's verdict on abrogation of Article 370 and 35A. Being Indian court, I didn't expect any more of them because that is what they are supposed to do to look after their uh, country's interest, and that's what they've done. I was never, uh, uh, you know, thinking otherwise that they will do that because uh, India uh, has uh, occupied Kashmir illegally, and they would want to use all their uh, offices, uh, including their courts, to continue with that occupation. And a Kashmir issue did not start with 370 or 35A, or neither is going to finish with that. Uh, Kashmiris will continue with their right of self-determination, get uh, their um, uh, right of self-determination according to the UN resolutions, uh, which are superior to any uh, local court's decisions. My name's Sarah Owen. I'm the Member of Parliament for Luton North. And I think what really hit me today was the level of fear at the recent news from yesterday, but also the lack of surprise that this is just part of an ongoing injustice against the people of Kashmir and the decades long struggle that they've had for self-determination, but now also the creeping infringement on human rights. It is so important that MPs heard firsthand today, but also that we keep the pressure up on the UK government here, because it is our communities in places like Luton, but across the country, but across the world that we need to be able to protect and say we stand up for human rights, we don't choose whose human rights we stand up for. This is a case that affects us all. As we mark International Human Rights Day here in Parliament, there was a conference on Kashmir 
And I am somebody who has spoken up for the human rights, not just of the Kashmiri people, but for people across the globe. And with respect to Kashmir, it is a matter of record that I have not just spoken up against the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A here in the UK Parliament, not just in the comfort of my Slough constituency, but also during my visit a few years ago to India as well, within New Delhi, when I was asked about my opinions on Article 370 and 35A, I said it was unjust on the Kashmiri people for that to be revoked. And I also hope that the government in due course would reconsider its decision. I also spoke up against the internet blackout, against the imprisonment of politicians, of elected representatives of the Kashmiri people. I think it's very important that ultimately there is a just outcome which involves India and Pakistan sitting together, but also the outcome must have the rights, hopes and aspirations of the Kashmiri people central within that. I know a lot of people in my Slough constituency have contacted me about it, elected councillors, residents who are concerned about the safety and well-being of their Kashmiri relatives. And that's why I think it's important on all of us, because human rights are universal, that we speak up on human rights and we ensure that the dignity and respect of all individuals is respected.